This is Richard with JR, and this is the first of two videos where we're going to take three of the new JR S8477SS 2K Game Changer servos, and we're going to synchronize them for PWM use on a helicopter. Now, in order to do this, you'll need a JR XBus programmer with the latest firmware installed in it. You'll need your servos set up and installed in the helicopter. You'll need a modified swashplate leveler, and when I say modified, normally the points in the leveler just sit on top of your swashplate so you can level it, but in this case, we've installed JR ball studs on it, and the swash leveler is actually gonna slide down and be used as the, the medium for synchronizing the servos. Very important that the slider is a good fit on the shaft and slides up and down very easily. If I disconnect these links, that slider will just drop on that shaft with no problem. It also has a little bit of tri-flow on it, Teflon in suspension, to make sure that it moves very, very easily as the servos sync up. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to check the numbers on the servos. These are XBus servos. Each one is gonna have two numbers associated with it. The first one is gonna be the channel the second number is going to be the sub-address. Now again, these are XBus servos, but we're not going to be using them in an XBus application. Every flyboardless unit I have ever used, including the TAGS Mini, which we have mounted here on the helicopter, um, have PWM pulse width modulation outputs. And the neat thing about these particular servos is they retain the information that we're going to set them up with right now when used in a PWM application. Now I have the servos labeled. Um, we're going to need to establish one servo as the master servo and the two others as follower servos. The two follower servos are going to learn the position of the master servo and match that at each of 120 points in their rotation. And so now we need to scan each servo each of the three cyclic servos and check the ID from the factory. They are normally channel one, sub address one, and then we're going to rename two of those. I'm going to use the uh, elevator servo, the rear cyclic servo, as the master servo. I'm going to plug it into my power distribution unit from JR for XBus and turn the power on. You want to have a good power source when you do this, by the way. I'm using the uh, 20 amp BEC in the helicopter. So now I'm going to take the programmer and we're going to turn the button back to the left, scan mode, and we're going to press the right button here. It should show 1-1. One -one. Okay, 1-1. One -one. Okay, we're going to turn it off. We're going to plug in the next servo, which is going to be the right cyclic servo. We have to do these individually. Can't do these three all at once at this point. I'm going to turn the power back on. Again, turn the knob to the left. Scan mode. Okay, 1-1. One -one. That one's good. Turn it off again. Now we plug in the third servo, and you notice I've labeled these just with dots on the cable. I don't put the little stick-on labels on because over the years, and I do keep these things for years, those labels tend to come off. So, okay, power back on. Going to rotate the knob to the left, scan mode, press the button, and again, it's 1-1. One -one. Now we need to program two of the three servos with new IDs. The master servo is going to stay at 1-1, but the first follower servo is going to be named 50-1, the second at 49-1. So we're going to take the right-hand aileron servo, we're going to connect it again to the programmer, we're going to power on the programmer, 
and we're going to change its ID. Now, the four buttons here are kind of interesting because they allow you to move around to various positions on the screen. So we're going to scroll down and to where it says position, and then we're going to turn it to servo ID. Notice it says servo ID is one. That's what the default is. We're going to scroll to the right, and then we're going to turn the knob until we reach 50. Okay, there's 50. I'm going to scroll back to the left, and we're going to turn the power off. Now, as we did before, when we scanned them to check the initial ID, we're going to turn the power on, and we're going to rotate the knob to the left where it says scan, and push the right button to start. Notice it's scanning and it's counting through the numbers, and it's going to stop at 50-1. We're not worried about sub-addresses in this, by the way. So this will take just a few seconds. And this will confirm that our right aileron servo is going to be 50-1. And there it is, 50-1. We were successful. That's the only thing that we really need to change in the XBus programmer to do this. Okay. So we turn the power off. And we're going to connect our third servo in, and again, we're doing all this separately because we don't want to change the IDs on two servos at once. It's very important that they all have their own separate IDs. So the third servo is plugged in. We're going to turn the power back on. We're going to scroll down with the center lower button. It says position. We're going to turn to where it says servo ID. Scroll to the right with the right button. And this one is going to be 49-1. So here we are at 49. We're going to scroll back. We're going to turn the power off. Wait for a second. Turn the power back on. We're going to go back a couple clicks to the left. Hit the start and it's going to scan and it's going to stop at 49-1. At that point we're all set up to start doing our synchronization. Okay, 49-1. That part of the setup is done. It should be noted that at the end of the process, the IDs of the servos, the two follower servos, will change, and we'll get more back into that when the process is over. Next step we're going to do is we're going to connect all three servos to the power distribution bar. And this is the first time we've had all three in here. And it doesn't matter what order or what port they go in here because it's XBus. It does not care. It will matter, obviously, when you reconnect them into your flybarless unit. But for purposes of this exercise, it doesn't make any difference. So I think we'll stop here. So just to summarize, we've checked all the servos for their XBus IDs. We've reset them to the new XBus ID. We have our swashplate leveling tool set up, easy to slide on the shaft. The ball links adjusted. I'm not sure I mentioned this, but the servo arms, I centered those mechanically on the servos when they were in the centered position. So in the next video, we're going to actually start synchronizing things. Thank you.